A turning point in American history. A time of great tragedy, but one that set a better course for the future. I honestly don't believe that a person, an American, can truthfully understand America without understanding the Civil War. The Civil War was bubbling up from the moment the Constitution was signed. It was something that was 60 years plus in the making that finally boiled over. It seemed possible a nation of the people, for the people, and by the people might indeed perish from the face of the earth. Our founding fathers knew full well that slavery was incompatible with our Constitution, but they knew that they couldn't put together the United States of America if they tried to deal with it at that time. The Constitution made it very clear that all men are created equal and that all men should be treated the same under the law. The Civil War corrected the conflict left unresolved by our founders. Hundreds of thousands of men, both black and white, died fighting to achieve this fundamental purpose, to secure, once and for all, the Declaration's promise that all men are created equal. It is rather for us to be here, dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln. I think the two key promises made under our Constitution, freedom and equality of opportunity, those two things, I think, uh, allow us to, to be self-determinative of our own lives. In our founding documents, it talks about a more perfect union. It tells you that our founders knew that the union that they were putting together at the time was not perfect. It was far from it. But they realized that if we utilize these things and we learn from them as we go, that we would in fact be able to create a more perfect union. One of the original sins obviously of America is the way that African Americans have been treated. And unfortunately it takes this really weird combination of cultural differences, economic necessities, and war. People forget that you have all these European countries fighting for economic dominance in the quote-unquote new world. Now bring that to the mix with another set of peoples with a completely different culture, free labor, that's going to allow the United States, this really small country that in an upset win beat the, the biggest empire in the world at the time and allow for it to become this economic engine. At the Constitutional Convention, slavery is a very contentious issue. And it's not contentious on the question of morality. There's, there are no delegates, perhaps with the exception of one, who argue for the morality of slavery. But it exists as an institution. And so a compromise has to be decided on this question. And the South is threatening to form their own country if no compromise on slavery is reached. And there's no guarantee that America will come to exist at all. And so the Northern delegates compromise because if they had not, they would have been able to maintain some level of moral righteousness, but they would not have been able to help the real people who were actually enslaved. They refuse, in Madison's words, to admit into the Constitution the idea, the principle, that you could have property in men. And that is the basis on which slavery is ultimately extinguished in the future. Well, you know, a lot of people want to say that slavery is something that's unique to the United States of America. 
and it makes us uniquely evil. They obviously don't know much about history because every civilization since there's been the written history of mankind has had to deal with slavery. The only thing that's really unique about us is that we had so many people who were vehemently opposed to it that we were willing to fight a civil war and lose a large portion of our population to get rid of it. One can argue that we don't heal fast enough, that we don't solve these things fast enough. And I, and I think that's a fair reality, but it also is recognizing that our founding fathers wanted us to make big decisions based on consensus. And so it takes time. It, it, it takes time to bring people together. The conflict over slavery in America perhaps hit a tipping point when in 1857, the Supreme Court made their infamous ruling on Dred Scott v. Sanford. No longer could Americans ignore the bleak contrast between their ideals and their reality. The Dred Scott case basically involved a slave that was taken from slave territory to free territory and back to slave territory. Now, the ongoing horrible legacy of the Dred Scott case was not so much that Dred Scott was determined to have remained a slave because of the laws of Missouri, but more so that the court basically ruled in a 7-2 ruling that the Constitution was not written with African Americans in mind and therefore any right that an African American, and at that time an African or a person of African descent because they were not American, brought to the court, it was not worthy of being honored. There was precedent all the way back to the 1600s and the early 1700s of people of African descent going to the court system, demanding rights, being able to free themselves by way of the court system a hundred years prior to the Dred Scott decision. The legacy of the Dred Scott case completely overlooked that and it put African Americans on a second class citizenry for at least a hundred years and it cemented it in the minds, unfortunately, of millions of Americans. And it's something that we've had to work through to bridge that gap and to heal from that wound. That wound cut America deeply. And yet, we can proudly say that is no longer where we are, even if some refuse to recognize how we have healed. There are those who would want us to stop someplace along that timeline and say this is where we get off this train because it's irreparably racist. We're sometimes our own worst enemy as Americans by trying to fuse those things in the past with where we are. The war itself proved complicated. Through the smoke of battle, objectives were not always clear. Both sides believed that they were defending something important for their future. In my family history, back in Ohio, we have an ancestor, John Temple, who fought for the Ohio in the Civil War. And it's just such a fascinating period in our history. Too often on the books, we focus on the generals and the politicians, and we don't really spend that much time focusing on the people who actually fought in that conflict. And it was a very personal conflict for them because so many people like my ancestor in the North could have very easily have been from the South, from South Carolina, from Georgia. They were fighting for their, fighting for their neighbors and fighting for their families and fighting for what they perceived to be their home. And I think it's important that when you study history is to understand you can follow the grand narratives, but you can't forget about the personal experiences that people were having. The sacrifice of over 750,000 Americans brought the American way of life into harmony with the intentions of the founders and encouraged us with new examples of the American dream. So I've got several unknown founding fathers and people from our history that, I, that this country wouldn't be what it is. And I think of, when I think of Robert Smalls, this is someone that we should all know about. He's one of the most amazing historical figures. Robert Smalls is a escaped slave that went from being a slave to serving in, in the House of Representatives. He's not one of the only ones that did that, but he epitomizes the ability of people to be something different in America within one generation. Not only did he come to influence the future course of the war by arguing with Lincoln that black soldiers should be able to fight, but then he became rich. He created his own businesses and he moved back to the South. He ended up being the founder of the South Carolina Republican Party. He is like the best of America, which is you come from a very hard a beginning, but you overcome all your obstacles to reach your full human potential. Though the war finally drew to a close, tragically, 
President Lincoln did not live to see the full effects of Union victory, as John Wilkes Booth assassinated him just days after Robert E. Lee surrendered. Lee himself lost everything, even his home becoming the final resting place for Union soldiers as Arlington National Cemetery. But Lee, unlike Booth, exemplified a path towards healing. The most interesting thing to me about General Lee is what happened after the war was over, after he had lost the war. And he basically signaled to his soldiers, he could have, he could have said, men scatter and become guerrillas. And if that would have happened, the Civil War would have dragged on another five, 10. It could almost still be going to this day. I just think of what that must have been like and the courage that would have taken from him to tell his, his, his soldiers who did every sacrifice imaginable in their cause. And then when they were defeated to say, okay, look, now it's time to heal this country and to be Americans. General Lee wanted to become an American citizen again. He apologized for his role in the Confederacy. He served as a, a college president and he wanted to make amends. There's a chance to be redeemed in America if people look for that opportunity. And if Lee can do it, People could do it after the Civil War, and people can do it after Jim Crow, and people can do it after the turbulent 1960s. We should be doing the same thing. The ratification of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments that overturned Dred Scott and granted citizenship and the right to vote to blacks allowed all Americans to partake in the promise of the Declaration of Independence, proving the strength of the American system. The very fact of the Civil War that half of this country went to war with the other half and put their sons and, and daughters at risk uh, in that war to do away with slavery is probably the greatest example the earth has ever seen uh, of, of people willing to self-heal. But that's the real benefit of the way our Constitution works. The Founding Fathers knew extremely well the difference between a plurality, a vote for an, electing a, a, an official who you will get to vote on again in two, four, six years versus consensus. Uh, they wanted our Constitution to be consensus-based, that the bulk of America, and that's why to amend the Constitution, it takes getting three-quarters of the states to approve an amendment. There's this new rise of trying to portray the Constitution as a pro-slavery document. I think the objective is to taint the Constitution itself. And if you're able to taint the Constitution and the principles of the American founding, to such a degree that they, are, they seem unrecoverable, then you actually open up the opportunity for those ideas to be replaced by something else. Though resolving the stain on our nation was possible only through the blood and suffering of civil war, the goal was right and just, and ultimately proved the true value of our Constitution. It admits our flaws. It says that there are times where we have gotten things wrong. The Dred Scott case obviously was something that we got wrong. Plessy versus Ferguson is obviously something that we got wrong. Instances of Jim Crow and segregation at the same exact time when African Americans are veterans in world wars are things we obviously got wrong. I think it's important when you study our history Yes, we have great and tremendous points in our history, but we also have tragedies. That's history, it's a mix of the two, and too often we focus on the good side, don't look at the bad, or we focus on all in the bad, don't look at, at any of the good. But when you look at our American history, what ends up happening because of our system and because of our values, it seems we, we get through those bad periods, and when, when the bad period's over, you're in a better place as a nation. And we do self-correct. The truth of the matter is, if you don't teach the history of slavery, you don't teach the history of racism, you don't teach the history of sexism, you don't talk about the cultural differences that both made us a strong nation but also divided us, how do you learn the lessons of history to move forward? And how more so do you find the civic pride to say, wow, our forefathers really messed it up in this regard, but we found a way to be a more perfect union afterwards. There's inspiration in that. The transition away from slavery and towards the rebuilding of the American nation was a period defined by the principle of creative destruction. What was old and inefficient was uprooted to make room for something better.